Okay, uh, we're going to do a little something different today. We're going to do uh, reporting services, SQL Server reporting services. And we're just going to create a, a very simple report to show you some of the real basics of creating uh, a report. So it can get you started, and then we'll add some more uh, features to the report later on, make, uh, make it more usable, certainly make it more dynamic for the end user to see. So I'm going to start here by opening my Business Intelligence Development Studio, or BIDS. And uh, in Visual Studio, I'm basically going to wind up starting a new project. So I'm going to choose File, New Project from the menu. And the project I'm creating is the Report Server Project. I am not doing the Report Server Project Wizard. I don't want to run through the Wizard interface right now. I'm going to do it all kind of manually at first. And I'm not building a report model, something we'll talk about in a wholly uh, separate video. So right now I'm creating a Report Server project, give it whatever appropriate name. I'm just going to leave the default here because I want to get quickly started. And uh, when this opens up, I'm just going to change some of the windows a little bit. I'm going to close that toolbox. I'll open Solution Explorer and I'm going to pin that out. Okay, so in this report server project, it does not create any reports for you automatically. You'll need to manually say, you know, I want to create a report and that's very easy to do. When I click on the reports folder, I can click on the add new report link. Now that will bring up the report wizard. And if you want to run through the wizard, that's great. That's a great way to get a simple report started. I'm going to be choosing to add a new item. And that new item I'm adding is a report. So I'm not starting the report wizard. I'm not adding a data source. I give a name for that report and simply click Add. And my report will then show up. And then my windows will also change. I'm also going to just fly these windows out, close this window down here on the bottom, just give us a little bit more screen real estate. I'm also just going to move Solution Explorer. I'm going to auto hide that by clicking that button here. It gives us more space to look at our design surface where we're going to be laying out the elements of the report. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to populate this report with some data. To do that, I'm going to create a data source. I'm going to go under Solution Explorer. Notice there's a folder for shared data sources. There's multiple ways of, of adding a data source to a project. And one is a shared data source. The other is a report-specific data source. And most people will wind up creating a shared data source. This is actually a separate file from the report. The report calls into this shared data source uh, to, to make the query uh, against a database of some type. So I'm going to create a shared data source. And I'm going to show you something kind of weird or odd in reporting server. Um, uh, how do we use that shared data source? So let me just do that quickly. And a, and a data source really in Microsoft world is, is a data connection string. So I'm going to click on... Uh, right click on the shared data source folder and, and click add new data source and I'll you know, just give it a simple name the data source will be something simple like SQL you know underscore server okay the type of data source it is is it Microsoft SQL server which is what our uh, case is is it Oracle ODBC is it XML and we're sticking simply with Microsoft SQL Server. And I could type in the connection string if you want to type it in. I'm sure I'm going to fat finger it. So uh, I'm just going to click on this edit button here. It's going to be a little bit easier for me to go and just, you know, select from the drop-down list the name of the server, the authentication that I'm going to use to connect to that server, and also the database on that server I want to use. And I'm using the sample uh, database, the AdventureWorks 2008. So uh, I'm going to click on that. You can click the test connection button to make sure that the connection string does work. And I'll say OK. Uh, I'll say OK again in the outer box for right now. And I have now a RDS file, report definition uh, source, uh, uh, data source uh, connection file here. And this will uh, be usable by more than one report, which is really nice. So, so getting back to making the actual report now, I want to, I have a connection to that AdventureWorks 2008 database. I want to make a query to extract data that I'm going to use in this report. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to open up this report data uh, tab. I'll pin this out for now, and. Notice that it has various things, built-in fields, parameters, and images. And what I need is this new button up here. I'm going to drag this down or click it down and choose to add a data set. I want to make a new data set. All right. So I work in the data set properties window. And I'll give a name to that data set. You can call it whatever you want. And notice when I, I made a, remember, I just made a data source. Well, let me pull down the list and select it. Oops, it's not there. Isn't that kind of odd? I thought I made one. Yeah, so I did. Well, I'm going to click the new button. And 
embedded data connections. Nope, I don't want to make another one. I just made one. I'm going to choose this here. Use a shared data source reference. And then when I pull down the list, oh, there it is. Great. I could also create a new one from here. Edit the existing one. In my case, I don't need to do much editing here. Again, I'm keeping this report quite simple. So I'm just going to use this shared data source reference and click on OK. So that will then now be here used in the report in the report called data set one all right and it allows me to type in a query here all right i have a query already out on the desktop that i could just i could use all right or you could use the query designer and do something very simple and straightforward all right. in the query designer i'm going to click the add table button i'm just going to add a view here i'm just going to do the individual customer view just because i just want something simple that's the only table I really need and I'm just going to choose some of the things I might want to add to the report like the person's title first middle name I might want their last name and suffix and I'm building a little bit I'm just building a simple email address list let's say uh, to, to you know maybe send out a mailing an email uh, to these people while, uh, telling them I got a new bike for sale or whatever it might be so I'll click the OK button here notice it's built this very simple query all right and this may be all the data that I want. If I need more data, I need to do joins. All that stuff is all possible. I can have multiple data sets in here. All right. And I'm, I'm just for right now, I'm going to say OK. All right. Then over here in my report data window, I see under uh, data source one, my data set that I have. This is the query. And then I'm going to lay out these fields that I have coming in from that query. And I want to lay it out in the report. So I'm going to go to the toolbox, which is down here, and I'm going to choose the, the type of layout that I want. In my case, we're going to keep it simple and just choose the table layout. So I'm just going to click and drag it out to the work surface. And this is where I can now go to my report data fields and drag out whatever fields I want in any order I want, like the first name field. Now notice when I drop it in here, it's going to make the link to that field in the body of the report and it's going to name the header automatically the name of the column. So first name, last name, and let's say email address. All right. Very quickly, I'm going to test it. I'm going to click this preview tab up here. Let it run that actual report. And it's going to look very raw right now. <laughs> it's very plain. But I do see my first name, the last name, and the email addresses. And if I go to the end here, to the last page, I have 421 all right, pages, which is a lot of email addresses, and that's fine. I'm going to start by, you know, basically fixing this report up a little bit. And some of the things I may want to do is, like, email addresses. You notice in the preview, it's on multiple columns. I can stretch these. I can put my pointer over the edge of the box and just click and drag. That makes it longer. Now in the preview, ah, great. Looks, it's all on one line now. How many pages do I have now? Still 421 pages. All right. Great. Of course, I can change other properties of the report. All right. One of the things I may want to do is the first name, last name, email address. It's very hard for me to notice on the first page of the report. And it seems like it's just another line. Well, you know, probably what I want to do is maybe like bold it or something like that. So I'm going to highlight that line. Now notice I clicked on this box right here. It highlighted the entire line, and now I can choose various properties from the text w window area. And I'm going to pull this little drop-down arrow down. It gives me all the options for changing this text. Like I'll make it bold, and that's one of the things that will make it stand out. Maybe I'll also change it to like a 12-point font. All right. And of course, you could even change the style if you want. Now that might make the report a little bit easier to read. You, oh, wow, look great. And we'll see in future videos how to do headers and that type of stuff that will make it stand out even more. But for right now, just, just, just to give us some basic formatting idea. All right. Other things that I might want to add to the report are stuff like go to my toolbox here, maybe like a line across the top. And this may be a good way to differentiate um, kind of a title area, maybe even it's good to put a text box up here. In that text box, box I'll put in something like email, 
list or something. It gives me a title for that report. And that, of course, is also uh, formatable. Uh, if that's a word, <laughs> I'm going to change the foreground color, make it maybe a, a red. All right. What, hey, there we go. It should be red. Mm, make it something nice and big, like 16. Change the window a little bit on that. Just to make it a little bit nicer and easier to see. Mm, maybe, maybe take this text. Change it just a little bit and make it more readable. Now when I preview, there's my email list title, if you will. A nice line my information there's a lot of formatting you can do to make this report look you know obviously very presentable also other things you can do I just want to show you one more thing before I end this video and we, we start another one uh, to get more features in here uh, what I'm going to show you is this is that yeah, I have a lot of uh, names in this report right? and when I look at my report data back to design mode here I have title first middle last name suffix and email address so what I'm going to do, I'm going to modify this data set and show you one of the things you can do is I can add a filter to this data set. All right. So I can filter out by, let's say, last name or email address and be odd. But what I want to do is maybe just want to see the people in one particular country or region or something like that. So I am going to go back to the query and open query design and just make it quick and easy. And in that list, uh, there is a place where I can enter, let's say, state or provenance name. So I'm going to add that to the query. All right. And then I can set a filter. Let's say for state provenance name is equal to England. Okay. Say okay. Now, what's nice is, all right. Just double check this here. Right. I have the state providence name. Refresh the fields. There's my state providence name. Now, state providence name does not appear in the actual uh, the, um, box here for the data. All right. In in my um, table, that column is not used directly. It's not displayed to the end user. But the filter on that column is in play. If I preview now. I should get a lot less pages here. I only got 44 pages. All of the people now on the list are actually just people in England, all right, which was the, what the filter was set to. So this is very, very powerful. So we're going to, in the next video, we're going to explore some more of, of working with the data set, working with these fields, and then we're going to get into filters. We're going to get into groupings and a lot of other fun stuff that makes this report more useful. As you can see, there's other things in the toolbox, sub-reports and images. Uh, uh, rectangles, charts, and gauges you can add to really make a great looking report. We're going to make this report look better and better as we go along. Something you'll be proud to, to show to your boss. They look at the great things that Reporting Server can do. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.